Hello, beer fans, brothers of barley, the barley brotherhood. Uh, welcome to the first class of beer school. Everybody be on your best behavior, please. Uh, tonight we have uh, our first student, uh, a very a, a veteran of beer, of beer in general, uh, Michael Komarov from the the Empire State of New York. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello, Michael. I'm glad you could join me tonight on a rather rather hectic evening in the in the beer tube uh, social media sphere. I think maybe the hurricane t took out the uh, wild card Wednesday. Thankfully, Jesse Merrill Bumpy Road Brun was able to hop in out of the bullpen at sh on short notice and do a Joker's Wild. And while all this stuff was going on, I I plan to set this up after Wild Card Wednesday, and uh, I stuck with my plan, and so we're here now. And uh, so uh, uh, Ronnie S has joined us in the chat. Hello, Ronnie, from the Gator State, Gator Country, Florida. He's on the, in the chat. Uh, recently, what came up was uh, on one of the Facebook Facebook beer groups a. A rather lively discussion was engaged over the beer rating, beer reviewings. Uh, I didn't, I didn't hop in on that myself, but uh, there was, as I thought, there were some good points made on on different sides on that. But uh, it seemed like it really hit a nerve, and it's something I've been thinking about for some time. Was maybe to try to get a little bit deeper into actually what these. Uh, ratings actually mean and put some context into it without context and without uh perspective you know it, they really don't mean anything you know michael is sort of like if you turn on a football game and you watched a few while and uh you realize that a touchdown counted for four points in this game rather than six and two points for a field goal you know it's like well you know there has to be some standard some reference point for, for these to mean anything. And I think sometimes like with, for example, on the alcohol leg, excuse me, you have the alcohol legs, the Facebook beer group. There's a lot of people that post personal ratings. There's no standardized scale on there for that. So it can, what, what can mean for one person, it can mean something completely different for someone else. There's no standardization to it. So it's sort of like a wild west, you know, everybody's sort of shooting from the hip. You know, so I thought we would take a look tonight at just maybe one alternate rating system and see, you know, if we can come to maybe a little bit more uh, continuity on this. But uh, what I chose tonight was uh, for rating system is to use basically the rate beer system. There are pretty much three systems, the untapped rate beer and beer advocate. They're all different. They all use different different criteria even. So uh, I'm going to try to do this a little bit different. I'll, I'll sort of as an interview, I'll, uh, uh, Michael, uh, you have a Spotinator, right, tonight? Yeah, I have, a, I have a Spotten Oktoberfest at 5.9% from Munich, Germany. And I was telling um, William that it says malt liquor on it. And that's another thing we could discuss. Right, that's, that's, that's a, that might be a future session. <laughs> yeah, I got anyway. you. Uh, so, uh, you sipped on it for a while. Yeah, I'm taking, it's, it's a classic Oktoberfest and I guess, um, it's funny. You mentioned Ray beer, which is, um, an interesting system. The only hole I find in their system is they don't seem to have any middle ground in their system. They're going to make those macros and those euro lagers in the in the first one to ten of the hundred, and then that middle section is left void, and then they start rating beers again in the sixties, seventies, eighties, and nineties. So there's like it, it, there's like a hole in their in their whole system. But again, to each his own. The top part is mostly what I'm doing, and I just I've never understood how they can rate a euro lager three and 10 by style. And the fact that it's being made to me means it has to be higher than that in a one to a hundred scale. So that's my one negative about the rate beer scale. 
Yeah, I read there's their emphasis on it's not as much on style, but is it is it a good beer or isn't it a good beer? You know, like if they go to a dog show, they don't care about best in class. They say, what is the best dog in the show? So, right. and, that, and I think that can sort of leave a hole in the middle because they use a Bayesian formula, which is some, a rating system was actually, I think, started by the movie industry. And so uh, yeah, you can each one of these has its own quirks. You know, there's positives and negatives. But uh, at least with that, you do know there is a standard scale. You know what the what the criteria is. You know what you know. You know where the goalpost is. Right. For that, and uh, so uh, you've taken. Okay, we'll start with uh, on yours. So okay. if I were if I were to give the kind of we tend to use this one to a hundred scale, right? But it's funny. I'll cross off and say that when I do my own ratings, I actually use a one to ten scale. Right. So, but. You have to change the 1 to 10 scale because it's not like if I'm giving a beer an 8.5, I can't convert it to 85 on the rate beer scale because an 8.5 for me is a definite A. So in other words, it goes up from there where a yeah. 9.75 is the highest I've ever given, and that would be the highest A plus since I don't give 10s. So my point being when I'm giving – ratings in numbers it's different on one to ten than it is on the hundred scale but um on my one to ten scale a 7.5 is kind of my average that's where i in other words in or most of the beers that i do buy fit in that 7.5 scale or up i have to say i've had some 725s some sevens and it's interesting because even related to to you and to some of the other people who do drink macros, it's not like I give macros a lower rating. It's just that when I'm drinking a Pilsner or a lager, if it doesn't have that full taste profile to me, it may suffer a little bit in the ratings. But I've rated some, um, I was going to say a good example. Um, I got to think of what it is now. Um, the Negra Mexican beer from it's it's a you know it's a a, a mass market beer. Who, what's a mass market Mexican beer? The uh, Negro the Modelo oh, Negro. Negro. Okay, right. that was used in a blind tasting at the beach club. Somebody brought it, and normally we only allow craft, and that wouldn't be considered craft because it's a mass market beer. But the guy snuck it in. Look, it's blind. I don't know what it's going to be. And I rated it really high. I really liked it. So I gave it a high rating. And it finished right. very high. Now, if you say to yourself, well, you know, Michael is trying to push craft. And here, this finished third. And, you know, how can that happen? Because you're rating blind. And whatever it is, it is. And I, th I think that's a quality beer. I thought it was really good. And that's a mass beer, you know. I don't like the individual one. I know I don't like its brother beer, the straight one. I do not like. Right. But, but again, it's like anything else. I did like the darker variety. It's an amber beer, but it's it was very tasty. It's John really like, it's like a Vienna lager. It's like a Vienna lager on the Modelo Negro. But I, and but I enjoyed it and I gave it a high rating. Right. So, Again, and wine tasting gives is a way to open up your your mind to the fact that beers can be really good and they can be macro, Vienna lagers, and be fine. So, you know, I don't put them down for it. Got that. it. Now, this is more, what I'm drinking now is more like a classic German Oktoberfest of the Marzen style, because there also are fest beers, too, in the you know, same seasonal beers. And this is more, I think, the beer that's brewed for the person in Germany drinking where the fest beers are the ones they served, you know, during this, um, the beer fest that they have in, in Germany. So, um, but it's, it's a, it's a good beer. I'm enjoying it. We got a, a comment from John and Eli. He's hunkered down at the folks house with <laughs> Zeta coming. It might be time to drink a few stouts. <laughs> yeah. It's it not like he's about to go to sleep, but it's funny <laughs> that, um, after the hurricane does hit Louisiana, it's going to be one of these fast ones that comes through quickly and North Carolina tomorrow. I don't know how you're in, you're pretty internal, so you might not be affected as much, 
But the Carolina coast is supposed to get hit pretty hard from what they're predicting anyway. Uh, the issue here is winds, 40 to 50 mile per hour winds, which could could equal some power fares here tomorrow, right. maybe evening or something. And but Atlanta, yeah, Atlanta, Atlanta is supposed to get 70 mile an hour winds, which yeah, is very unusual. It is. But sometimes ours get sort of uh, mitigated by the mountains. When it crosses over the mountains, it sometimes weakens. So we'll just have to wait and see. But I pray everybody for everybody's safety on that regard. But uh, so, uh, yeah. And one thing, you know, when we do these beer reviews, if you get to know a person, you you know what their rating stands for. Right. You know, and you're you, you you've drank beer for a long time. You know, you know what you're talking about. And so you sort of you, you sort of interpret those scores because you, you trust the people. And you, know, you know what they're saying. But when when a, when a bunch of people get on a like a face a Facebook page group and you know everybody's giving out scores right and left sort of nilly willy like that, it, it can create some confusion. But uh, okay, on your beer right now, we're going to start uh, the first. Uh, it's, it's five criteria, five points. It's rated on. The first would be appearance. Okay, let's one, look at one it. to five on appearance. Okay, I would give it a four. Okay. And I guess what I'm saying is it has clarity in the appearance. Um, I think I would give it a four. It's got the classic color of that style of beer. Power of the Mars in style. And yeah. um, so I would give it a four. Sort of a mahogany brownish type of. Okay, the and the second is aroma. Okay. And I would give it a four for aroma as well. It's very malt forward. You can really um, you, you, you get a combination of the malts and you really can't smell any hops per se, but I guarantee there are hops in there. Yeah. But if they're 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 underneath the malt and they're not something which is really being featured. So in the nose, it's a malt forward beer, and I would give it also a four. The nice thing about this five point system is all you have to do is multiply it by two to get a ten, so you can have a hundred point score. Right. Because the ratio percentage is all the same, so that's the right. nice thing about this one. Right. Right. And this is this is a fairer system than the one that I have, the one to ten, because mine cannot be done on a straight thing into the one to a hundred scale you have to moderate it in order to do it with this it comes out straight okay uh the next criteria would be uh mouthfeel one through one to five okay i think the mouthfeel also is a four to me and that is related to the fact that it has a very as Mars in beers go, and I've had several through the years, it has a very, um, how would I describe it? Like a moderated taste. It's, um, it's complex on the level that the, the malts have been integrated in a way that the mouthfeel is, um, is, it's solid. It's a solid mouthfeel. Medium mouthfeel, I guess, if you want to classify it. It's not a heavy beer. It's not a light beer. It's somewhere in the middle. Sort of like a fastball right down the middle. A 2-0 and fastball. you got to get it over the plate. So. Right. And it's, and it's, you know, it's Munich Marzen kind of style. The Paul Anner, which is another one similar, is very similar to this Marzen. But, I don't know, if I had to choose between the two, they're, they're very evenly matched. That's another Munich... Um, Marzen also, but I would give it a four also for uh, mouthfeel. Okay, now this, I guess, now we get into the really, the heavier stuff as far as the rating here. Uh, taste, one through ten. Okay, let's see. Let me take another sip. I think I would give it an eight. And 
I don't think I've ever had an Oktoberfest that I gave a nine or a 10. So this is maybe eight is about as much as I rate an Oktoberfest, but it's quality and it does taste, you know, very good. I do like, by the way, I do like the Mars in style, I think, better than the Fest beer, if I have to compare those two things in, in October Fest beers. Um, by the way, William, have you had um, Spot in October Fest before? No, I've had some other Spot beers. I haven't tried that one yet. I would like to get, because I liked, I, uh, I drank a Spot on one of Bumpy's uh, Multi Money shows recently, probably about a month ago, at the uh, Spotinator. Yeah, I've had that before too. That's their Doppelbach, which is a which is also a well made beer as well. Or one of the beers I had, I uh, so. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think what pretty much on that one, it's got the malt forms. It may lack a little bit in layer complexity, but the taste is pretty much what's uh, represent of the style. Right. Eight out of ten would be pretty. So, uh, and rate beer up as opposed to beer advocate. This is where they really differ is on the overall is number five. Uh, rate beer puts a higher emphasis on this than beer advocate puts more emphasis on the taste. But on the overall, it would be general. It's, this is a general sort of an impression. Was it pleasant? Did you enjoy it? Would you buy it again? How does it rate? with other beers of that style that you drank. Is there anything that maybe sets this apart from that as a preference point? So this is your, this is the big one here. This is uh, 20 points. So this would be 40 points out of a hundred point scale. So you're up, you're up, you're up for this one. Okay. I am going to give this 17 out of 20. So if it was gonna, if I was going straight across the board, it would have gotten a sixteen because I would be going straight up the scale, the two fours, and then the eight, and then the I go to sixteen. But it gets a kick notch to seventeen because I think as an Oktoberfest, it goes above that level. It's not reaching overall to the top of anything I could ever consider, and yet it does get that extra bump up for me, that extra point. So I'm going to go to 17 on the overall. I would definitely buy it again. And I think I would try anything new Spotten came up with because the three I've tried, this one, the Optimator, and they have a Hellas Lager I've tried as well, which is very good. So those three have been very good. So if they, I don't know how often companies like this come up with new beers. They seem like they're old German companies and they just stick with what they're making. But if they ever did, you know, decide to come up with a new style or do a German alt beer or some of the other styles, I would definitely try it. So have, uh, I'm enjoying this. One. I'm happy I chose this one to do because the other thing I was considering was going to just be a lager. And it would have been it would have gotten a, a, a rating maybe a little bit lower, but you would have seen different parts of the style than this so it's just it varies a lot so the point you're trying to make about beer advocate beer advocate it seems to um be different in that final rating that number right. five that that's that's the one thing i you know i, I read about these that they put more emphasis on the app. They put 40% of the emphasis on the taste. Where, like, if, if it's uh, like if you're using a 20 point scale out of 50, this is basically this is a 40 point deal here, 40% of it. So that's right. where the, and also uh, on the beer advocate, they use a five point scale. But after you, after you, after that, they then put it through that Bayesian formula, which has a weighted scale. That's how they come up with their overall score. Like right. it might be surprising, but on Beer Advocate, if you look up their top 250 beers, they're all 100 or 99. So they are actually, you know, I, that's more than I, I was kind of surprised by that. that. There were that many beers or more that they consider world class. So, you know, that's pretty impressive. And so if you went, to, if you put that list down to 95 
on beer advocate, 95 to 100 is considered a world class beer. There are a lot of beers that they consider world class. Right. So, you know, it's uh, I mean, the more you dig deep into this, it's sort of like peeling the onion. There's a lot of layers involved in it. Yep. But OK, on your score here, though, I, I, I'm adding it up here. This would be an 80 score overall. Okay, which would I guess on the scales that we do would be a solid B? Would that be a solid B across the way we would figure it? I would say because uh, this one time I, I I was joking with with a teacher in school, and I told her I said, you know, uh, if somebody scores a 50, that's average. They got as many rides they got wrong. Why isn't that? Why is that an F? It's an it's average. So the way I would I would view this is if you give e equal. The thing I my quibble about the hundred point system is basically a thirty point system. It goes from seventy to a hundred. That's basically the workable range. Where that leaves the sixty nine to zero pretty much in Netherland. Not many beers going to fall in that category. But if you look if you look at it this way, what basically this is. 80 to 100 would be an A. Right. 60 to 80 would be a B. 40 to 60 would be a C. 20 to 40 would be a D. And anything above that would be the E to F range. So by this, yours would be right at the low A range. Basically an A minus at 80. So that makes pretty, that's pretty consistent with the way they do this. So that, that's pretty revealing there. Right. And it's interesting in its way because if you actually asked me what I thought of the beer, I would say, even before we started rating it, that it would be bordering on an A for sure. So that, I would have, you know, just going in and knowing yeah. I've had it before, I would have said B plus to A minus would have been how it would have rated. This is exactly where it falls on the B plus A minus fence, right at the 80. So I think that, I think this worked out pretty good for that beer that, that you have. And, and, and it's, it's understandable. You went through each specific category and came up with an overall store that pretty much mirrors what you were describing. So I think so it's let me ask you a question. When you're doing a specific style, does the style that you're doing, can you keep your own point of view? No, let's say it's a style you don't particularly like. When you're rating it, can you be totally objective about the numbers that you're doing? I think one can attempt to, but I think there's always going to be subjectivity that creeps into this. I mean, it's after all, it is a subjective thing. You're rating a product. Right. It's not like a race where people are running the 100 mile dash. The clock watch tells the tale. It's an objective standard. Or in a foot, I think people like sports because it's definitive. There's a winner, there's a loser. At the end of the game, you look at the scoreboard, one team won. The war with beer ratings, it is, it's, it's a totally subjective field. And, you know, a lot of interpretations are made, a lot of, uh, it's a lot about perspective, about perception, and things like that. Uh, sometimes when I'm, but when I, when I give a rating like on, you know, for your, for your, you keep, you keep a running a scorebook on that. I always do factor in my mind how this beer compares to other beers in, in this style. Mine is sort of a hybrid. I come up with an overall general impression, you know, when we're doing it like a, a B, C, D, you know, the, the way the school, the school uh, system were like, the, you know, the, when I went to school, 93 to 100 was an A, 85 to 92 was a B, 76 to 84 was a C. They've since bumped that up. But right. what we're going on now, basically the 90 to 100, that does factor into my mind. Generally, how do I enjoy the beer? Does it represent the style well? Do I think it's achieving what the brewer set out to do? And so that's sort of like the, the BJCP guidelines where they're not rating beers. They're, they're judging beers against all the others in their style, which is different than we, when we sit here maybe with five different beers on a panel and each comes up with their own score. But I do in my mind, 
always try to factor in how does it rate within the style. Right. So also, when, when I do my own get togethers, which I do at the beach club and I do sometimes here, I try to not allow one person's point of view to change the average to the point that it destroys the fabric. So let's say you have eight people tasting and the averages are somewhere around eight, seven and a half to eight. If somebody gives a three, I just average, I take it out. And I, in other words, I have a scale of two. I'm a I allow an aberration of two. So if they let's say somebody goes three and somebody else goes five, and then the rest of the scores are all high, then those scores would stay. But if somebody goes three and all the other scores are seven and a half and higher, I circle that. It still remains on my page, but it doesn't go into the average. And all I'm saying to the person is, you hate this style. I understand. The beer is quality. I'm rating it as quality. And everybody else is too. So I don't, because basically that, that three can change a spot when you do the average at the end, can move that beer from four to seven something like that, because the scores are usually very close in the way the averages come out. You know, it's all, sometimes it's, you know, stuff wins by 0.03. I mean, stuff can really be close when I figure it out at the end. I'm shocked how many ties I get because you're, it's on, the scale we do is a one to 10 scale where you're allowed to use quarters, halves, and three quarters. And it's weird how once you get into a certain subgroup, you know, it just could be a difference of a quarter of a point that beer wins and the other one comes in, you know, third or fourth or whatever. So that's kind of like an, if somebody was a statistician, they could tell you why, what your chances are of getting a tie. And it pro it's probably not as high as it seems to turn out, but um, that's just how the averages turn out when you figure it out. Yeah. I look at your score uh, when you, uh, your thirds, I would often look at the scores. One thing I noticed was that like, the, the, but the, but if you have like a tie for third, there's no fourth place. It goes to fifth. Right. I just it's like, it's like it, it it whatever it just goes to the next the next. Yeah, it, it goes to fifth. So therefore, at the end, you would have a fifth number fifteen rather than a fourteen because that's the way doing tennis or in golf where they split the money up the purse. Right. If there's a tie, like if there's a three way tie for third, the next will be sixth place. And I'm usually fairly close in the yeah. beer. I'm the one, especially the ones that I have here. The ones I do at the beach club, more people do donate beers. But here, I basically run the whole thing. Sometimes people bring beers too, but it's less. So I basically know when I start out with my groupings of beers, I know the ones that are going to finish near the back. And unfortunately, and this is just related to style, and I try to get some of them earlier so you can, you know, you have to say your taste buds might be affected more after you've had 10 or 12 because you know the alcohol starts getting to you a little yeah. bit and you can't taste as well but you are drinking less in a bigger group you're drinking less because let's say you have a 12 ounce beer and there's six people everybody's only getting two ounces so it's not like you know you're not going to get pulverized by it but some of the pilsners and lagers have more trouble doing well because comparatively their taste profile is different it so is. People look at it more like they say this tastes just like a beer, if you know what I mean. And what do we mean right. by a beer? Where a sour, an Oktoberfest, a stout, a porter tends to have a more rich and distinctive taste, which I mean, it depends what you're doing. If you're doing barrel aged beers, they can people can tell right away because the complexity is so much higher in those beers. But and, and, um, and, and I know there are beer beers on that I respect, and I've heard some of them say, I would never give like a macro more than like a 3.5. That's pretty much their, their, like that might be a Gini Cream Ale, I, which is similar to a, it's, you know, it's a macro, an ale, but similar. But that's about their peak for that. And I can respect that. But see, they're, they're top ended though. They're not, you're not going to give, you're never going to give a macro of four, seven, five or a four and a half because it, it, it doesn't have the complexity level to really reach that. It's but just like, not in it, style. Right. But like with this, for the 40% overall score, that's where you can say, but I enjoy it. It's pleasurable. I think it represents the style well. So it gives it a fair shot. 
Now, it William, if you, gonna, if, if you were going to do another beer school after this, what would be a good subtopic of other things we could discuss? Because this is this has been very interesting to me. I, I've enjoyed it myself. Uh, one thing I would like to get into it is the uh, the beer laws in each state. Something little sort of a beer legalese, something like that. I I actually discussed this a little bit with with uh, Ron Terrio. That sounds interesting because you have all the ABVs that John and Illy can't get more than 14%. Right. And in, in North Carolina, you can. And in New York, I can. And, I, and I'll throw a little teaser here tonight. I actually discovered a story where a, where a brewery was penalized because they sold fresh beer. Wow. It's a 2017 story, so I'll just throw that out there. Okay, so maybe you could, bring, you could bring that up again also. I will. I definitely – that that really got my attention. It's like the red flag went up. I said, how it, in the I'm world really is happy. I'm happy you hosted tonight. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I just uh, – I just forego – forego my beer right here, right now, because I knew you had a limited time. But, you know, I'd already set this up, sort of wanted to do it. See how it okay, went. But but, we, uh, should do, we should do another one. And if nothing else, maybe next Wednesday night, if Jay does his normal thing, it's going to be Imperial Stouts, by the way, that Jay is doing next Wednesday on Wild Card Wednesday. But maybe we can do this, do another one next week, right after his broadcast. Because yeah, there's a lot of yeah, and we'll maybe try an alternate rating system. I have okay. more time available when it's the straight time that I've set aside. Where if I try to do a different time, it's like I have personal situation. Which yeah, is, I understand. Which is, you know, you know how it goes. And um, thanks for hosting, William. And I'll keep in touch with you. And, you know, next season, I hope the Giants are better. But I hope that, yeah, uh, they need a starting pitcher, but so does 30 other teams. I know. And they also need some bullpen help as well, because not that the bullpen underperformed badly. It's just that you need a lot of those, you know, 95 plus arms, because it seems like with this new thing where they have to face three batters. It's almost like you got to be ready with that next guy coming in after you take the guy out because, you know, the other guy is going to come back. There's a guy we had, a Mexican pitcher who's been on the disabled list with a shoulder thing. We're hoping he comes back. He was on the roster at the end, but he never actually came into any games. So he'll be back next year. But you take care. Yeah, you. Uh, I'm glad you joined me tonight. And, yeah, keep in touch. Keep in touch, and um, I'll keep in touch with you on Facebook. And on Messenger. All the We're platforms. For hosting. All the platforms. Take care. <laughs> yeah. Okay, have a good evening. You too. Take care, Bill. Okay. I hope that was informative. Uh, I may try to do some, some future uh, shows along this same vein. Like I mentioned, the... Uh, the individual beer laws in each state, some of the uh, terminology of beer, you know, it's a lot of a lot of different things to to talk about, and sort of shake it up a little bit, try to try to do a few different things. But uh, anyway, uh, thanks for joining tonight. Thanks, Johnny Lee, Ronnie S, and then to uh, contribute in the chat, and uh, hope everybody's safe next few days with the. Hurricane Zeta in play. And uh, like I said, uh, everybody have a good one. Until next time, bottoms up and don't spill a drop. Thanks for joining. Watching.